Hello and welcome to the Red Men TV. It's Monday, it's daily news time, but first, the big news of the week so far is Red Men TV are moving their fantasy footy game to Sky's Fantasy Football. You can catch up with us, and I'm not revealing my team yet. You're in the league, I'm in the league, Tom will be in the league, and Machen, when he's back off his jollies, will be in the league. The pin is 8 2 3 4 2 8 Zero. That's eight two three four two eight zero. Please use the, ask the bill payer for permission <laughs> if you're going to join the league. Now we're going season long fantasy football. We're going Sky Fantasy Football. You can use the app. You download that for free, or you can go to SkySports.com forward slash Fantasy Football. Links, everything else in the description. Um, I actually lost our Redman TV league last season. You lost it outright. No, I was the winner for two years on the bounce. And I, so you're taking anything other than winning as a, as a loss? Yeah, yeah of I course. I mean, if you don't come first, uh, ask, ask the wife. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Find that there, Tom. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to continue because I'm not asked. Um, but I think the, the important thing to take out of this is winning means everything and coming first means everything too if you're a selfish lover. Um, but no, seriously, I'm just going to stop the fantasy football talk now because I can't. You can't continue. I can't continue. You're just painting yourself down. And, look, this is what fantasy football leads you to. This man's face <laughs> laughing like this. Yeah, I've... Um, I gave up last year, like about 10 games to go because I just fucked up. I made a few clangers, forgot to change my team a few times, forgot to change captains. And I thought, you know what? Not doing fantasy football, it's actually given me some time back into my life. I've, I've, I've started about five different leagues. I've joined the Team what? Talk Draft. I've done the, well, the Fisher one. I've done the Sky Sports one. I, I the Sky tomorrow. Sports one's where it's at. We're leaving. Uh, like we've had a we've had a league on fancy.premierleague.com. Whatever the website is, I mean it's crappily named anyway. Yeah. We've had that for ages. And what I've realised is that there's too many people in that league now. I mean we were regularly finishing a thousandth yeah. or something like that. There's just far too many people. So basically I'm calling all the people who are really good at it. So if you're amazing <laughs> at fancy footy, don't. don't join our fucking league because I've had enough of you. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I have upped my game so much this summer that I'm just gonna basically just batty us all. Anyway, look, you're not here for our fantasy uh, fantasy news. Um you are here for Liverpool related news. So injury update. Um Shay Ojo, go on, Aubrey, you got the news <clears> anyways. <throat> So yeah, we we sat down to watch the Barcelona game together, and we were like, "No, no Shay Ojo, the news wasn't actually out. Just assumed maybe he's not part of that team. He's definitely going to be part of Mance. The Mance team come out, and I think every Liverpool fan was like, "Fuck, where's Ojo? Because he's looked so exciting, hasn't he? And he, he Joe finally back into the squad after the under nineteen so Jean, He is injured. <laughs> Essentially, he's got a back injury. He stayed at Melwood instead of travelling for treatment on the back injury. Doesn't sound too serious." Mm -hmm. It probably means he's not going to be in contention for the first couple of games because, again, he was trying to get his fitness back up. It's funny, isn't it? I think f for me, it's not like, funny. Uh, we want him on the bench because he's good. No, yeah, not funny. Ha ha. Funny as in funny turn. Yeah. Um. So I think for me, Ojo seems like a much bigger part of the squad than he probably is. To to be honest with you, and I'm yeah. not. And I, I know you you put Ojo in your first eleven no, strongest no. team. No, no, no. He was. I contemplated at the end. No, I contemplated it, but I didn't. I said for pace, I went with Van Alden on the left wing. Okay. But but for sheer just pace, Ojo could get into that. So I know that we are looking at these midfielders that we've got, and we've got so many good midfielders. Ojo feels like he's a part of that, but I just wonder whether he is actually still yeah. firmly he, entrenched in the unders. He shouldn't be part of our first eleven. Because you've gone out and spent big money on Van Alden and on Mane, and you've still got players like Orana. And in f in theory, he should be be he should be below Markovic in the pecking order. He's done more than he? he's done more than 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 few of them. He's definitely done more than Markovic the, the, in pre season. I disagree. Markovic has got at least two assists that I can think of off the top of my yeah. head. One of them being for Grew just head at the weekend. Barca. You know, and there was an, there was definitely another one for I think it was Grew just again. In one of the earlier games, the the problem with Markovic is, he's shit until he does something <laughs> until he, decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you're talking about, and this is the thing, and I, I, I mentioned, um, I mentioned this when you talk about wingers. Historically, it's the most difficult position to excel in because you, quite often you're in one-on-one -on -one situations where you go to beat a man and yeah, you whip a ball in. The hardest 
ball to hit is a 30 yard pass in football and you're whipping balls in from the side to, to men running at different fucking directions. I'd say you, you tilt top, they make a run front post, back post and you've got to hit them at top speed. That's the most difficult oh, skill in football yeah, and you've got to beat your man to get there first. So it's quite often that wingers are always frustrated and Markovic is kind yeah. of like that. He's a frustrating winger. No, he definitely is. Um, hey, look, uh, it's sort of veered into a conversation of has Markovic done well in pre-season? I actually think he has in the limited time he's had and he's always played in the B team. So yeah. the, the quality of the player that he's had isn't as good. But objectively, we're one all with 10 minutes to go against Arsenal. Who do I want him bringing off the bench? Shea Ojo or Markovic I, I, I want no, Shea Ojo uh, yeah, yeah, I want I'd Shea Ojo well. you know what I mean yeah. because he's looked more dynamic he, he he's added Markovic has added two assists Ojo scored he's only had like one and a half games you know what I mean he's had an, I think he's had an assist in a goal in pre-season he scored in the in the Premier League towards the back end of last I'm season I, yeah I don't count the pre pre-season I'm remembering what Ojo did at the end of the season and when yeah. he came on with Ben Teke, he was getting brought on yeah. as well. No, It yeah. was dynamic yeah, no, I, I and it gave you that option. So it's disappointing to not... Oh, look, I just want Klopp to have every option he deems available. Shea Ojo can go out on loan and if he gets a loan to a top Spanish team, a top German team or a Premiership team, so he's playing for Bournemouth and seems to like our players. Premiership, I think it's a bit, are we back onto Premiership now? Is it Premier now? League or Premiership? I don't know. I, I don't know. It was the Carlin Premiership no, years I'm ago. I'm putting a brand name in I there. think we're... I, Until it's the Red Men Premier League. I can't believe they've changed League One to the EFL and everyone's like just started talking about the EFL. Have they? Have you not heard it at League, all? So it's gone from so it's the Premier the, the Championship is now the EFL. The English, English Football, Football League, League, I'm assuming. I'm gonna check that now because if I if I if I'm totally if fucking wrong, wrong yeah, it just shows you how little <laughs> I know about English football outside but, um, the top. So so if Shea, if Klopp does it, it deems that Shea Ojo needs to go on loan to progress his career, as long as it's a really good move and he's got that seventy five percent clause, I'd be completely happy. I'd actually be happy watching Shea Ojo tear it up for another team in the cha in the Premiership um, on match of the day. Because Klopp's obviously made the decision that he's happy with who his options are going to be on the bench. Yeah. But it was looking like he was going to get some football. So for him to have his fitness and his pre-season stunted by a little bit of an injury is just a negative, I think. Yeah. And just in case anyone was asked, I was right. It's, it's all called the AFL now. It's not the Football League. The English the Football AFL. League. Championship League One, League Two. Yeah. But I was talking to a, a Hull No, not a Hull fan. Where were they fan of Sheffield United fan on Friday, as you do, because you know I will talk to people who support other clubs. I was locked in a room with them in fairness. Um but yeah, they were talking about the EFL. I was like, the EFL? What's the EFL? I was like, you've no, I, I knew about it, but I was like, they've adopted it so quickly. Yeah. Like, I'm still calling the fucking Carlin Cup, the Carlin Cup. The milk cup. Or you the call fucking it milk cup or yeah. the Coca-Cola Cup. Yeah. Like not the cock or whatever yeah. it's called now. Like anyway, do you know what? We're gonna move on. Um <laughs> from cock to uh Adam Ola, Luckman, Liverpool Arsenal, Tottenham and Southampton all competing to sign challenge. England on the nineteen, international Adam Ola, Luckman, and that's the Daily Mirror. Kids 18 years old, he's made 24 appearances for Charlton, scoring five goals. He's a forward and a winger. It's good to see we're still looking in that market, that yeah. 18 to 21 year old market, isn't it, right now? Even when you look at the squad and you think we're about complete, there's still improvements to be made elsewhere at the club. Oh, definitely. Look, um, he's not going to go into the first team. We buy him, he's not going into the first team, you know what I mean? He'll be a. You've got. He's the type of signing that you pay. There wasn't a fee attributed to it. I can imagine it's going to be about three and a half million, around about that bracket, possibly as cheap as a million to three and a half for someone who's played twenty four times for Charlton. <clears throat> um, you you buy them for two years, three years time. It's what Klopp said when he talked about the Pogba transfer, look like which looks like it's going through. He said you don't buy the best player in the world now. You buy the, you next, buy one. the next one or the one in two time, two years time. We bought um, Gomez from Charlton would have been in a similar position, played around about the similar number of games, and we all saw how quick he stepped up. Unfortunately, again, a player who was hit by injury, but how excited were we around about this time in, in four weeks' time, if, if they were on last year, about our Gomez? Four three, eight four, weeks ago. Four, four, yeah, four games into the season, three games into the season, we were looking at Gomez, and we were like, wow, we've got a player there. You know, a young lad who's just stepped up, and he just looks so comfortable, and maybe Charlton's Academy is one of those academies that's producing really good players. I know Everton, 
have done it with Barnsley. Bar they brought Stones in from Barnsley mm -hmm. and then they've brought Holgate in from Barnsley for around about that two to three million bracket. Look, they're potentially selling Stones this summer for like 50, 60 million quid, which in terms of investment is incredible as a deal. And all they've got to They could really probably buy Finch Farm back. They could. And, put, and some Soleros for, every, pay, pay the last for everyone's few rent. But, uh, and in the end, the joke, they've got, so you've got to do that. You've got, and maybe we're setting up a little link with Charlton to like that's definitely where our scouts are looking. You look at clubs like Southampton, you know, Arsenal have done it with Southampton as well. You know, they they took Walcott and they took Oxley Chamberlain and Callum Chambers in there. You know, good players. We want them we want it yeah, I want to have them now because it's better to buy them at two or three million yeah. than pay twelve or eighteen or 30 for them in two seasons time. No, you're totally right. And, here, and here's another one of those players, player that Liverpool were linked with last season. In fact, Martin Odegaard obviously went to Real Madrid, didn't he? Um, yep. And it was it was a huge move, obviously, for Martin at the time. You know, I think he was, was he 15 or 16 yeah. at the time of going there? He's been talked about for a couple of years now. Um, it was mad to see that Real Madrid had go for him, but they're obviously looking at the same thing. Yeah. They've been spending money like it's going out of business for years now, Real Madrid. And they maybe have had a little bit of a shift to their strategy. Marker, which is basically Real, no, Real Madrid's... Mouthpiece. Oh, are they? Yeah, they basically do all the dirty work for Real Madrid ah. for them. If if there's a if they want to tap up a player, Marsh are the ones that say Real Madrid are interested. And if they want to get rid of a player, Marsh are the They'll ones put that it say out there. yeah. Um, so a little bit more credible than Metro, but uh, equally not credible at all because they are just doing Real yeah. Madrid's dirty work for them. So apparently there is, there is an offer on the table to loan Martin Odegaard from Real Madrid, and that's literally all Aubrey's given me. That's um, all it said. Can't imagine we, that was we front talked, page. We talked about well, we talked about Martin Odegaard last week on the news show. Um, I'm glad to see that you tuned in for that one. I and, did, yeah, and it was you're, great. You're, you're fully aware of all of the good work that me and Tom did. did last week on that show. Sorry about that. I've got Snapchat. So do. we so ultimately like last Wednesday or Thursday, I think it was. Go and check that out because there was lots of more detail in that. Basically, you had already wrote the news agenda, and then you had a. An alert that said, there's a breaking news, we're signing someone from Real Madrid. It turns out it was a story from last week. <laughs> so, so I just put it in there because ultimately you'd have shouted at me for where's the Real Madrid transfer because that's what we're going to title this. We're going to trick you as well. No, we're not. No. But um, basically, he, we turned him down, uh, well, he turned us down in 2015. He was publicly quoted as one of these absolute amazing wonder kids who was like four, 15, 16, he went round, he, saw, he got toured by, around Melwood by Brendan Rodgers. There was reports, I don't know how true they are, that he did exactly the same tour at you know, United, at City, at Arsenal. You know, Everyone was in world football was touting him. Real Madrid won that race. And then recently Ancelotti's come out and said, yeah, I didn't want him and it was a, public, it was a PR exercise. Real Madrid had to be seen to be buying the next big thing. And he beat these clubs who possibly did want him. Never wanted him. And then there was a lot of rumours about him. He got bombed out of the first team training down to the reserve training because his effort wasn't just there. Did he go to the B team? Like in I, the I, I think so. I can't remember. I'd have to, like, I, I just remembered he was reportedly, he had a nightmare like first few weeks at Real Madrid and it was never going to work out for him. So it's a strange one, I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know enough about him as a footballer. What I would say is, I think he's still only going to be, what, 17, 18, in an attacking midfield position. Unless he's absolutely incredible, which I don't understand why Real Madrid would be letting him go, if he's absolutely incredible. Where's he going to fit into our team? I suppose the, the, the thing is, like, if you go to Real Madrid at 15, 16 years old, you get you get a you get a wedge regardless. Yeah. Even if it's 15 grand a week, something you then find out what what a player is like mentally. Yeah. Whereas at 15, 16, and <clears> playing at his hometown club, how can you judge that player properly yeah. until you've seen how he handles adversity, how he handles money, and all that type of thing? So maybe Real Madrid had question marks over that side of his game. I'm not sure. Um, one thing that I did like to see, and this is the best. You know what? Orby should do this because he's written this and it made me laugh okay well, I had big pressure now so Balotelli's being linked with a move to Chievo the seventh Italian club to be linked with him this summer so yeah, I actually asked I was like did you write that Aubrey or was that the article yeah, and it was like I, no. I, I dropped the seventh Italian thing in there so he's been linked with so far AC Milan Inter Milan Sampdoria Genoa Pescara and Sassuolo the league's changed since I watched it yeah because I don't know well, I, I'm imagining that Genoa were always like a, a B. A, a yeah, they were like a, 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 a 
a back and forth. And they were, like and they were, they were the, the, the fucking boss team in the under 11s that John Thompson used to play for in uh, at the Shankly Fields. Like, yeah. Played under 11 foot and then you've got Pescara and Sassuolo. Yeah, who that's never basically heard of. is just some kind of fish mascara. <coughs> um, and Sassuolo's just definitely a Newcastle player, isn't he? Yeah. He, he, I wouldn't be surprised if a Sassuolo was signing for Newcastle, yeah. So, um, obviously, you get seventh club to be linked with him. They're the 20-team league, aren't they? So there's 13 more to go in the next two <laughs> weeks before he's completed the set of the whole of the of the Italian first division top league, turning them down. That's amazing. We just we just need to get rid of him. Big time. Another player we need to get <clears throat> rid of, Christian Benteke. Well, be first of all, that was a bit harsh. Do we need to get rid of Christian Benteke? If Daniel Sturridge is crocked, possibly not. But yeah, look. Are we forgetting Ings again? <clears throat> Oh, Danny Ings, no. Look, Ben, I think it's absolutely massively telling that the only player who went on tour to not get one minute of football is Christian Benteke. So he is just not part of Klopp's plans. No. So he, like, I did a, I get a news on him last week when he was going to give someone else. And you look at his stats and it's like, he got, I'm going to have to remember the stats so they're not exactly right, but there's something like, 40 in 90, so 40 Premiership goals in 90 appearances for Aston Villa, plus nine in like the 23, 24 for us last year. He's a proven Premier League goal scorer. He's a proven Premier League goal scorer in a team that puts balls into the boxes, into the box, and he's a proven Premier League goal scorer when you've got wingers or when you've placed someone off of him, both of which we aren't going to do because Klopp's shown that he hasn't going to do that in the season that he actually managed him and we didn't use him to his best. And also with him not featuring in any of pre-season, we have not shown that we are even practising the plan B. I'm going to play devil's advocate because I like to. But we started that Barcelona game and there's and I, I, I thought at the time we were probably playing 4-2-3-1. Yeah. I think it could quite easily have been that 4-3-3 that you've mentioned a few times. Yeah. Um, they mentioned that on the commentary to the mains game that Milana played centre oh, midfield yeah. um, against Barcelona. When you've got Mane on one side of the ball, and let's say you do play an, uh, an Ojo or uh, an Origi or someone else, or even a Wijnaldum on the left-hand side, which we've seen at times during pre-season, that 4-3-3 almost mirrors the 4-3-3 that they played the Aston Villa. Yeah, that worked well for them. Yeah, I, I, I go and look, they, who was it? Who played, so a Bongaho and the Austrian lad whose name escapes me. Does it begin with a W? Wyman. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he got loads of success. He scored goals. He inspired Brendan Rodgers to go out and spend thirty million, thirty-two and a half million pound on him. And look, he's a Premiership goal scorer. And I guarantee, if he moves to Crystal Palace, I will be putting him into my fantasy football team because with Andros Townsend, Zaha, and Balassi putting crosses in for he's him, gonna he's going to score Premiership goals. Again, this this is the summer that we say it, and depending on how this season goes. Well, I'll change my stance. Whatever Klopp wants, oh, who are we to yeah, question? No, I agree. You know what so I mean? Right. And now, if we're shit and we finish 14th next year, I will question every decision and I'll sit on this couch in a season's time and say, yeah, yeah, we need to be changing this up. If we win the league or if we finish top four, Klopp's done it right, hasn't he? You know what I mean? So ultimately, I trust Jürgen Klopp. His pedigree says he should be trusted. He's been a very good manager at other clubs. He's an infectious personality and so far, everything he's kind of done... There's, uh, there's about one jot on his copybook for me, and that's it. The Southampton. The Southampton. Also, the Southampton. That's all I can think yeah. of, you know and, what I mean? Uh, for me, the Europa League final, because I think, you know, after two minutes, that first half, <coughs> I could see that we were done. Se the second half, yeah. Um, but ultimately, yeah, so there's m most of what he's done. It's always just filled me with confidence. So why be a negative person? Why say? Why be a negative? Really? Why say? Just like get rid of. Like if he doesn't want him, which he obviously doesn't, for some reason, whether it's he wants, he'd like that type of player. We could go out. He's played at that type of player before. We're like Lewandowski. Lewandowski's a typical target man. Benteke just obviously isn't yeah. the the player he needs. Well, or it's wants. not just it's not just about attacking, is it? At the end of the day, you know, I put forward that thing that we play. We can play a four three three. Christian Benteke has not shown us anywhere near the like. Where creative of what Firmino was done against or, Barcelona yeah, the weekend. or in Origi or in that a, position away at Dortmund. So there's two sides to every story and there's got to be two sides to a striker's game during football. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out our Fancy Footy League. Do join us over there. Uh, if you think you're good enough, join us. If you 
think you're not good enough, definitely join us because I just like beating you, basically. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and we'll see you tomorrow.